If you want your website to actually convert visitors into clients, I'm gonna show you the perfect homepage structure that works every time for every business out there. Because here's the truth, it's not about your traffic or how good it looks or even your services. Now, I've analyzed thousands and built hundreds of service business websites, and it turns out the real problem is that your homepage is probably organized like a brochure rather than like a real sales conversation. But here's what changes everything. There is a specific 10 section psychological sequence that walks visitors through an emotional journey from stranger to buyer in about 90 seconds of scrolling. And today I'm breaking down the exact anatomy section by section. All right, so let's dive right in, starting at the very top with what we call the hero section. You know, people will also call this above the fold, it's up to you, but here's the thing. Once people land here, you've got about five seconds to convince them to stay or they're gonna leave. Five seconds. And I want you to guess the biggest reason for people abandoning a website. Co-marketing did a study where they asked real website visitors what annoyed them the most, causing them to leave. And it turns out the biggest reason wasn't pop-ups or even slow loading pages. It was a lack of message. In other words, the websites that didn't make it crystal clear what they can do for you and how they make your life better just confuse people enough that they leave. And that means they'll never see the rest of your homepage no matter how nice it looks or how much time you spent on it. And you'll notice there's a few things going on here and they each serve a purpose. So let's start with this right here, what we call eyebrow copy. It just sits on top of the headline and it's there to call out your ideal clients. Are they overworked teachers, busy car owners, unemployed job seekers in Houston? Whoever your perfect client avatar is, name them here so they know this is for them. And that brings us to the headline, and this is where 95% of businesses completely blow it. Your headline needs to promise your client's desire or the problem that you'll solve for them, not just describe what you do. This here is the emotional buy-in. An emotion always comes first in buying decisions. And that's not just according to me, that's according to Harvard professor Gerald Zaltman, who researched consumer behavior extensively. So to just focus on the what we do part and not on the what you get part is like throwing 95% of your profits right out the window. So your headline could say something like, you know, get your dream kitchen without the nightmare renovation instead of just kitchen remodeling services. Nobody wakes up wanting kitchen remodeling services, right? They wake up wanting that beautiful kitchen without the hassle. Now, directly below the headline, we have the subheadline. So this is where you finally explain how you deliver on that promise. So this could say something like, you know, Tampa Bay's stress-free kitchen remodeling team from design to installation in just three weeks. Now they know what you actually do. Plus, you've called out your location. If you're a local business, that's really important, not just for local SEO, but also just so people on your page know that you can work with them. And next we have your call to action button. So this needs to be really specific about what actually happens next. Don't try to get cute or clever with it. And don't just say something like, contact us or learn more. Those are conversion killers because people are just always a little unsure about what that's gonna mean. Are they just gonna be filling out a form and then waiting for you to call them back or what? So it should say something like, book your free design consultation, right? It tells them exactly what happens next. Now here's something interesting that most big businesses that have actually invested in website optimization do that most small businesses skip and that is add some kind of social proof right here in the hero section before you ever have to scroll down at all. You could have a few customer photos like this with text like, you know, join 500 happy homeowners, or you could just put one killer testimonial snippet if you wanted to highlight your best one. And I do like to add this five-star graphic just so that it immediately reads as a five-star review, even if they were to, you know, skip actually reading the words. And that's important because most people do skim websites. They don't read every word. So we need to lean into that with these little visual indicators when we can. And the image over here, this is really important to, again, help you tell the story more visually. And most businesses really mess this up by either showing people meant to be the workers in the business doing the actual work, 
or some you know, woo-woo photo of a person doing this on a cliff. And nobody in the history of the world has ever actually done this outside of a stock photo shoot, by the way. Or they'll do a skyline or an object of some kind. But what you wanna show here is the happy result. So if you're a landscaper, don't show yourself mowing a lawn. Show the family enjoying their beautiful backyard afterwards. If you're a financial advisor, show someone relaxing because their retirement is finally secure. Always the after state, never during the messy middle. Always the customer, never you or the people who work for the business. Now the reason that everything in the hero section is about the client and how their life can be better is because they have to come here and see their story reflected on the page or they just won't care. Okay, so moving on right under the, the true hero section, you wanna add these three little check marks. Now, these are meant to be three quick outcomes or results, super short, like you know, three to four words each. These could be things like beautiful new kitchen, higher home value, zero renovation stress, boom, boom, boom. So these are the actual results they'll get from working with you. Now, this video really isn't so much about design or even layout, it's much more just about the actual content that your perfect homepage should include. But I know that you probably wanna see what this would look like on mobile too. So I am gonna show you each section as we go on both. So just see how everything stacks vertically. The key difference here is making sure that that call to action button stays above the fold, meaning it's gonna be visible without them having to scroll. Because mobile visitors are even more impatient than desktop users, so if they have to scroll to find out what to do next, you may have lost them. Okay, so next up we have the section that just bluntly brings up the main problem that your ideal client is currently feeling. Now to do this right, you do need to actually know the problem that you solve. And for some businesses, this is a complete no brainer, but for others, it can be really easy to fixate on the wrong problem. So it's usually worth doing some really thorough client research and it's pretty easy. I actually just use ChatGPT with the deep research feature to help me figure that out. But once you know the problem, you need to go a little further and agitate it by bringing up some of the symptoms of the problem. You know, I've got that here as bullet points, which can work really well. You can also do it as just a few short paragraphs, whatever feels best for you. Now, I do get pushback on this from some business owners who say, well, you know, I don't wanna go negative or be a fear monger. But this really isn't about that at all. What you're doing when you bring up the problem that they're already having, by the way, it shows that you understand it and it implies that you have the answer for it. And this one's really easy to translate to mobile. Again, it just stacks like this. And speaking of having the answer to their problem, this next section leans into that where you introduce the solution, which is you and your service. So you wanna lead into this section with some kind of a statement about how you get it. You understand their pain because you've either been through it yourself or you've seen how it can affect the lives of countless people before them. Then once you've established that you understand them, then you can go into the section about why you're qualified to help them through it. So this one quick section establishes you as the mentor figure that they need to get what they ultimately want. And this is the perfect section to add a photo of yourself too, just to build that face-to-face -face trust. Because I've seen way too many service business websites that just look like they're full of stock photos or AI photos with no trace of real humans behind the business. And today when trust is at an all time low, you need to show them that you're real and you stand behind your work publicly. And I would try to actually get a decent photo here, not some dark grainy snapshot from 15 years ago. You know, smartphones take great photos, so just make sure it's well lit and that you look friendly and trustworthy. And for mobile, again, it's just stacked, and I, I would just make the photo a bit shorter height-wise so that people don't need to scroll as much. Okay, moving on, next we have the benefits section, um, where you wanna call out three main benefits that your customers can expect from you. So this is super important, because here is where you're gonna try to set yourself apart from your competitors by either bringing up extras or perks that you bring that your competition doesn't, or you know, maybe there are things that your competition does too, but if you're the one talking about it and they're not, the end result's the same, you win. 
And benefits tend to really trip people up because they always confuse them with features. And the best way I can think of to show you the difference between benefits and features is on HelloFresh's website right here. Check out what they're leading with in these headlines. More choices, less boredom. Uh, they could have made this headline about the 20 new weekly recipes, but that's really just the feature that brings the real benefit, which is you won't ever get bored of the same meals over and over again. Then we have quicker recipes, less prep work, which is all about saving time, but said very specifically as it applies to this. Then healthier meals, just as tasty. So rather than just labeling this as dietitian approved meals, it's all about how you'll be healthier and you'll love the taste. So list out your three most compelling benefits and then go into the feature that makes the benefit possible. And you also do want a visual um, that helps illustrate each benefit too. So you can use photos here or icons, whatever works best for you. Okay, next we have testimonials. So it is incredibly important to include social proof like this on your homepage so people can see proof that what you're claiming is actually true. And that matters because 72% of people will only take that next step with you after reading a positive review. So I like to include three here, so try to find three testimonials that actually do a good job saying something that's gonna help someone you know, either overcome an objection or talk about a pain point, or one that talks about the outcome or the result that the rest of your page is promising. So what we don't want here are those bland, you know, great service, highly recommended testimonials that don't really say anything. Every testimonial on your homepage needs to say something specific to earn their place here. And please keep them short. Like this amount of text I have here is pretty much what you wanna shoot for if you can. Then include their photo if you can get their permission to use it. It just helps it hit harder because, you know, hey, if this person's willing to publicly stand behind this review, I can trust it, right? And again, you wanna use a five-star graphic here is just visual shorthand for people to see that this is in fact a glowing five-star review. And to pile onto the social proof, if you happen to have a bunch of great reviews on review sites like you know Google or Yelp, whatever that is, you can always drop a line like this right down here using those review site logos just to show people that they're safe choosing you because lots of other people have gone before and they all had a great experience. So now people know how you can help them and they've even seen proof that it works, but some people still may not be sure how this all works and that uncertainty can kill a sale. That's where the simple three step section comes in to show them how easy it's gonna be on them to not only get started, but to get to the finish line. And this is psychological gold. People are terrified of complexity and if working with you seems complicated at all, they'll find someone else even if you're better. And yes, you want exactly three steps here, not four, not five, three. And here's the formula that always works. So step one should always be them taking action. Book your free consultation, call us today. It's whatever your call to action button says, you'd pretty much just repeat that right here. Step two is your process simplified down to its essence, right? We design your perfect space or we handle everything. It's basically where all of your actual process happens, but you're taking it out of their hands and letting them know how you're taking care of all those messy middle parts. And step three is always their happy outcome. So enjoy your beautiful new kitchen or whatever the result is. You're literally showing them, do this simple thing, we'll handle the middle part, you get the result you want. That simple. Now you can use images here like I have, or this can just be text, but the important part is that you're actually labeling these as step one, step two, step three. Because I've seen people mess this up with just one, two, three, um, which is a lot less clear, and they may just skim over them and think that you know these are just more features or services or something. You could even use arrows or a visual timeline connecting these steps together. Make it feel like a journey, not a list. Now on mobile, the big change here is just going from a horizontal layout to a vertical timeline. Trying to show a horizontal process on a phone screen never works. You know, people can't see the full flow. So vertical is gonna be the only way to go here. 
Okay, moving on to our next section. This is where you're really gonna separate yourself from your competition. I call it the flex section for two reasons, because this is where you get to flex your unique advantages, and it's also pretty flexible in how you present it. So you've got two options here. Option A is what I call the 10 reasons why list. And here's how you can do this yourself. So first, you wanna research the top decision criteria that people use when they're choosing a business like yours. And again, I would just go to ChatGPT and use either deep research or agent mode, tell it to scour review sites and forum sites like Reddit and Quora. Then you just wanna basically reverse engineer those decision-making factors into a checklist of what makes you different. Literally the reasons why to choose you over any other business. Now, this works great when you can't directly claim superiority. You know, maybe you're not the cheapest, but you can still list what you do well. Option B here is the comparison chart. So us versus the other guys. But only use this if you can honestly show advantages here. You know, each row needs to actually compare apples to apples. So make sure that each row is talking about the same topic, not just two random unrelated lists of the things that make you good and the things that make them bad. And again, with the visual indicators, you wanna visually show that your list is good and theirs is bad with little icons like this. Traditionally, green means good, so don't get too caught up in using your brand colors here. I would stick with the classics because people know what it means. Green is good and red or even you know, grayed out like this means bad or at least worse. And the icon choice here matters too. Check marks literally mean check, we've got that. And the X means they don't obviously. So don't just choose random icons. These tend to work the best. Now on mobile, the comparison chart can get a little tricky. You'll need to get creative to make it work. The 10 reasons list translates a lot easier. It just becomes a narrower checklist. Okay, next we've talked about benefits and features, and this is where those plain old features are gonna go. Um, think of this like the tech specs for a TV that you're gonna buy online. So you may be saying, but I thought benefits were the important thing, not features. And yes, benefits are more important than features in general, but remember that Harvard professor earlier who found that almost all buying decisions are made with emotion first? Well, that's only part of the story because for some people, they then need to back that emotional decision up with logic before they're gonna buy. So this is the part where we let those extra analytical people justify that emotional buy-in by seeing exactly what they're gonna get. So here's where you'd put things like, you know, free design consultation, 3D renderings, all permits handled, daily cleanup and 10 year workmanship warranty. So I usually like to put anywhere from 10 to 20 features here, either in a simple bullet list or like this with icons for each one. Okay, next we have frequently asked questions. Now, yes, this is used to proactively answer common questions that people ask you all the time, which is just gonna help qualify people in a little easier. But more importantly, this is a place to proactively handle objections that they may have too. So think of this section as almost like a virtual salesperson on your homepage, making the case for your business as airtight as possible. So what are those five or six questions that people need answered or objections that they're gonna need settled before they feel comfortable taking the next step? Just write each out as a question, then address each one with your answer or if it's an objection, what's your best rebuttal against that objection? Okay, and next we have a really simple call to action section where you just ask them if they're ready to get started or you know some version of that. Try to make it specific to their dream outcome. And then you're just gonna repeat the same call to action button as you had in the hero section. But guess what? That's just the homepage. There's definitely more to a website that converts visitors into paying clients. So I wanna invite you to my free on-demand masterclass how to build a client generating website that sells your services for you. Just click right here and you can get immediate access to my most in-depth video training yet, where I'm gonna show you what you need on your website, what to take off right now that's hurting your ability to get leads, and how to seamlessly bring it all to life in just one weekend. So click here and I can't wait to show you how easy it really is.